Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is, oh, March the 19th, 2022. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. First, a brief word about the NCAAs. If you look at the win distribution, you're going to see that the very top seeds, right, the first and second seeds in the conference, excuse me, in the brackets, are doing phenomenally well, right? Your assumption has to be, in my opinion, that at least two of the final four are going to be within the top three seeds of their bracket, right, of their regional. There have been upsets. Trust me, I know. I had Kentucky. I think I laid something like 18 points in a game. Was at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings in West San Jose and saw them lose a game they should have won. But understand the big difference, and I mean the big difference, between these favored teams and these outlier teams these underdogs are the bigs. Even in that Kentucky game, one of the Kentucky big men was unstoppable. So the way I like to play NCAAs is I like to look at the very top team, right? Right now you're getting the shortest odds on Gonzaga. And I like to stay away from that team. I like to take the teams that are highly rated around it where you're getting big odds. Right, Arizona. I'm on the West Coast. I can tell you Arizona's a juggernaut. Kansas, for example. I'm interested in, and you're getting great odds on this team, Houston. These are futures bets. To win it all, right? Baylor. To win it all. Those are the teams I'm focused on right now. The logic is simply, if Gonzaga makes the NCAA Finals, they're going to play an opponent, and you will have gotten major leverage on that opponent. At that point, you can hedge the play. How much you bet on Gonzaga if they deliver and make the finals, how much you bet on Gonzaga is going to be a function of the leverage you're getting on the other side of the play. And understand, the other side of the play are a series of teams. You have to keep a ledger of how much you've bet on these other teams. It's not necessarily that I think Kansas is going to win the NCAA, but I know they're loaded. I know Bill Self has been here before. Right? I understand the bigs make the difference. They'll provide the margin of victory against weaker teams. So, when you get down to a Sweet 16, an Elite 8, a Final Four. I know Kansas will have faced that level of opposition before in the regular season. Right? So, right now, you're getting outsized odds. I understand on Ken Palm, the argument against Houston is that they haven't played anybody. Right? I get it. But Kelvin Sampson has been deep in the NCAA tournament before. Their head coach. Right? You're getting them at way out odds, far greater than 10 to 1. Right? That's the kind of high seed that you want to have part of your betting portfolio on. Again, not because you think Houston's going to win it all. It's just that when you look at odds distribution, you realize that Houston is likely to be among the last team standing. Right? One of the final bets I'll make in this tournament will be on Gonzaga, right? Gonzaga's overpriced right now. There's something like a plus 200 to win it all, right? One of the final bets I'll make will be on Gonzaga, and it'll depend on how much I've spent on other elite teams that I think might make the Final Four. Just understand, though, that if Gonzaga falls, and Kentucky, of course, SEC team, John Calipari, a former NBA coach, very successful NCAA coach, fell apart in that game. 
right? Threes do hurt big teams, right? Because an opponent just needs to have a guy who is adept at getting open behind screens. These are young players. You're only seeing this team once. You don't quite know your opponent's weaknesses. You don't quite know how to D up that three-point shooter. So Kentucky blew out, right? They, they crashed and burned. It's even more interesting because that game went into overtime and you thought, oh, with five extra minutes, Kentucky will assert their dominance. They did not. Understand, that could happen to any elite team. But I believe just like Kentucky had a big in that game that was unstoppable, you're going to find that Kansas, Baylor, Houston, Arizona have bigs that are unstoppable in key moments. That's why these teams are high seeds, right? I, I vividly remember when Villanova won the NCAA. I've seen long shot teams win the NCAA tournament. It's possible, it's also unlikely. You want to focus on the top two seeds, depending on the facts, maybe the top three seeds, in a given regional, right? You want to structure the play where you're only betting futures. I know there are a lot of people out there saying, oh, take money lines round after round. Okay, fine. I'm the opposite. I want to get a position at big odds, Houston here, for example, on a quality team that's a high seed with skilled bigs. Then I want to sit back and see how it plays out, understanding that in the NCAA, there's high volatility, right? The only certainty to me is that some high seeds are going to be in the final four. That's what I'm banking on. Right? I'm not going to get too carried away when a UConn loses a fifth seed to some other team and stuff like that. I understand, too, that a 15 seed has already won a game in this tournament. Okay, okay, that's all true. Lower-seeded teams tend to fade. We're going to reach a part in this tournament where the lower-seeded team is probably going to be a fifth or sixth seed. You want to concentrate on the good teams with good bigs. You want to stay away from the overpriced favorite until you have to pick them in a Final Four or Finals game just to protect the investment you have in their opponents. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. This is one man's way to play the NCAA. Right? The basic premise is sooner or later, talent takes over. Big talent. Right? That's not to say that there haven't been guard MVPs of the NCAA tournament. But all I'm saying is the difference between high seeds and low seeds tends to be the quality of their bigs, forwards and center. Right? Height, low post move, back to the basket skills, leaping ability. Rebounding, that rules the day. The teams I'm focused on right now, I'm staying away from Gonzaga. I know they're talented. I'll wait for them to get to a Final Four or a Finals before I hedge it, right, by putting money on them. But the teams I'm focused on are Kansas. How are you getting such great odds on Kansas? You're getting better than 5-1, to one, right? Arizona, folks, they're a juggernaut. The only reason we aren't focused on Arizona is Gonzaga has sucked all the oxygen out of the room. Baylor and Houston. Those are the four teams I'm focused on. It's futures betting because I want leverage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Tell us how you're doing it. Tell us what's worked for you in the past, what you hope will work for you this year. Thanks for stopping by.